Thirty. I call this meeting of the Lawndale City Council to order. I ask the city clerk to to please give us the roll call. Okay, Mayor Pro Tem Kearney. Here. Council Member Suarez. Here. Council Member Hoffman Gorman. Here. Council Member Cuevas. Here. Mayor Pullen Miles. Here. All members are present. Thank you, Madam. Our flag salute will be held by Councilwoman Bernadette Suarez and Pastor George Bagalini from the Hope Chapel Hawthorne will lead us in a word of inspiration. Please stand. Face the flag. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing. Good evening, folks. Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, Council, staff. I'd like to start by just reading a poem. And it's called The Blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you in his care. May he carry the burdens you cannot bear. May the Father, the Son, and Spirit divine give you and your family blessings of every kind. May the Spirit guide you in all of your ways as you trust in the Lord all of your days. May health and healing touch your life. May your spirit and mind be free from strife. May the rough seas that battle your soul become peaceful as your heart becomes whole. May your sleep at night always be sweet. May in your dreams the Savior you meet. May he reveal visions and dreams there in the night. May you awake to morning with a new day bright. May the power of the enemy's snowy blast melt into hope that will ever last. May the sorrows of the past wither in the sun as it shines upon your face from the Holy One. And may you and I forever sing to the Son of God, the King of Kings. Just a brief prayer, folks. Thank you. Father God, we do want to acknowledge you this evening. We do thank you for your presence. And we know that your word promises in Proverbs that as we trust in you with all our heart and not lean on our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge you, you will direct our paths. So we thank you for that direction tonight, Lord. And as we come before you, we want to pray for this community and thank you for every household. Ask that you bless and protect by your grace and mercy every father, mother, child, whether born or unborn, elderly, disabled, all those that need extra care, Lord God, bless them. We thank you for those that serve and protect this community. We thank you for our sheriff's department and fire department. Pray that you would protect them as they protect us. We thank you for those that you've raised up for such a time as this. We thank you for our mayor and council and staff and everyone that serves with the heart that loves this community. We commit this meeting to you, Lord, and trust your wisdom to be dispensed upon us as decisions are made that honor you and your word, timeless principles, and indeed benefit the people of Lawndale. I personally pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Magalini, for the words of inspiration as well as the poem. I appreciate it. Thank you. Let's hear from our Captain Allen from the Sixth Report. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council. I'm here tonight to present the public safety report for September 7th through September 19th. First, in regards to crime, overall crime statistics continue to trend downward. Robberies are down 35%, assaults are down 19%, burglaries are down 6%, and grand theft autos, after being as high as 80% this year, is negative 10%. There has been a slight uptick in larceny thefts, which ended a four month downward trend. An evaluation of larceny thefts will be conducted to determine if there are any patterns that can be identified. I would now like to discuss a couple of key arrests that occurred during this time period. On September 13th at about 6 a.m., Deputy Beck, who was working traffic enforcement, observed a vehicle driving in a dangerous manner near Rosecrans Avenue and Prairie Avenue. Deputy Beck caught up to the vehicle and conducted a traffic stop. Deputy Beck quickly determined the driver was under the influence. The driver was determined to be over the legal blood alcohol limit. 
The driver was arrested for driving under the influence and booked at South Los Angeles Station. I highlight this arrest because it shows Londo deputies are continuously on the alert for drunk drivers in an effort to keep your community safe. As a reminder, it's important not to drink and drive and to use a designated driver or a ride share whenever you plan to drink. On September 14th at about 1 a.m., Deputy Parker conducted a traffic stop of a vehicle containing four occupants near Marine Avenue and Osage Avenue. Inside of the vehicle were four Londell Street gang members. Deputy Parga made contact with the driver who immediately admitted to possessing a handgun. Deputy Parga safely recovered the handgun from the suspect and several patrol units arrived. The driver was arrested for possession of a loaded firearm and booked at South Los Angeles Station. Though Londell does not have what would be considered a big gang problem, you should know deputies are always monitoring and providing pro proactive law enforcement regarding this issue. Last, on September 16th at 6 p.m., Deputy Doherty was investigating a strong arm robbery of Londale, on Londale Way where the victim's bicycle and beers were stolen from him by three persons. Deputy Doherty located two of the suspects near the Londale laundromat and helped recover the victim's bicycle from one of the suspects. Both suspects were arrested for robbery and booked at South Los Angeles Station. I'm proud to state that your deputies take crime seriously, no matter how big or small, and will always do their best to solve crimes. This concludes my report, and I'd be happy to entertain any questions you may have. Okay, are there any questions of Captain's report? Okay, thank you, Captain, thank you. for the report. Yes. All right, let's move on to oral communications. Oral communications, when you have the opportunity to speak to this body on items that are not on the agenda, if you would like to speak to this body, we ask that you just line up by the flag. When it becomes your turn, just approach the podium. If you would start with your name first, we would appreciate that. In about two minutes, the amber light will come on and give you the signal to start wrapping things up. Is there anyone wishing to speak to this body? Good evening, my name is Griselda Sanchez. Um, good evening, Mayor Proland Miles, members of the City Council, and City staff. Again, my name is Griselda Sanchez, and I'm the Community Outreach Coordinator uh, for Fame Assistance uh, Corporation, and we're a nonprofit organization. It has been proven that tobacco smoke is very dangerous for those who don't smoke. Scientific studies have proven that tobacco smoke will drift from unit to unit that the tobacco smoke will come from outdoor, through windows, doors, vents, etc. Our homes are now built to be airtight. That is why institutions like HUD, the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, and the CDC Center for Disease Control have issued statements that all multi-unit housing should be free. HUD has even placed non-smoking policies in most of their affordable housing buildings. And many municipalities in California have begun to adopt laws to protect residents from tobacco smoke where they live. Several years ago, the California Air Resource Board, the state agency that regulates outdoor air, said that tobacco smoke is a toxic air contaminant with no safe levels of exposure able to cause illness and death, as dangerous as the most toxic automobiles and industrial air pollutants. The same statement and conclusion that the U.S. Surgeon General gave us. In our time conducting outreach here in Londo, we have encountered many people have expressed their concern from exposure to secondhand smoke. We again ask for the opportunity to meet with you individually and share our information. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Hi, everyone. My name is Jessica Hernandez. Good evening, Mayor Poland Miles and members of the City Council. Again, my name is Jessica Hernandez, and I'm a resident of this beautiful city. I want to take this opportunity to talk to bring your attention against the problem of tobacco smoke exposure that has affected my family and I. As many people in the community, I have also been affected by tobacco smoke. Some of, my some of my neighbors smoke. When they smoke, the smoke travels inside my home. I close my windows and doors, but the smoke finds its way to enter my home. 
I am worried that my children will develop allergies or breathing problems because of it. As mentioned before, tobacco smoke can affect many parts of your body even if the person does not smoke. There is no risk-free level of secondhand smoke exposure. Even short exposure can be harmful to our health. In adults who have never smoked, secondhand smoke causes heart and lung problems. In children, and can cause ear infection, respiratory problems, and growing problems. There is no doubt that second t that tobacco smoke can affect anyone without discrimination. I urge you to consider addressing this problem and protect us from the unwanted exposure to tobacco smoke. I believe I believe that every person has the right to enjoy their home without worrying about breathing other people's smoke into our home. I have learned that tobacco smoke is very dangerous for anyone who breathes it. I urge you to take uh, to take. I urge you to look at this issue and meet with us to talk more about about it, how we can fix it. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Yes, sir. Good evening, Mayor Polamiles, members of the city council, city staff, and community members who are also here and watching us from home. My name again is Ricardo Torres. I am the Tobacco Program Director of Fame Assistance Corporations. As previously mentioned by my colleague, we've been working in the community for the last three years. Most of the work we do, it's educating the community about the dangers of smoking, secondhand smoke, and thirdhand smoke. According to the informa information we know, tobacco product contains hundreds of chemicals. And when ignited, it produces about 7,000 chemicals. And hundreds of those are um, are to be toxic, and many of those are classified as poisonous. Uh, we have also conducted surveys in the city of London, and residents have shown that at least 45% of those who responded, answered, uh, who answered the survey, had secondhand smoke drifted into their home in the last year. And we know that during the pandemic has been even uh, more. 95% of those uh, surveys said that they would like to live in a non-smoking building or a completely uh, non-smoking building. And 97% of those respondents said that they will support a law that regulates smoking in different areas of the building. Um, I would also like to just mention that uh, as September 15, we started nationally celebrating the Hispanic Heritage Month. And more than 50% of the residents who um, rent you know, homes in London are to be Hispanic as well. Tobacco smoke exposure it's very dangerous uh, for anybody exposed, and according to the U.S. Surgeon General, there is no safe level of exposure to tobacco smoke, meaning that any exposure to tobacco smoke can be life-threatening for some people. We ask for the opportunity to meet with you, and if possible, also maybe some more time during one of your council meetings, and we can present more information to you uh, so you and the community can get informed of uh, how tobacco smoke can affect people's life. Thank you for your time, and we're looking forward to your responses. Thank you, sir. Okay, I'm gonna close public comment at this time. I'm going to ask any uh, comments from the council members. Ms. Torres. I only have one question that maybe staff can look into is, I know it's it's kind of a controversial topic because you're, you're borderline with health, but then you're also talking about people's rights. Um, just kind of a rough estimate of what it would cost to actually put it out to voters, if that's the case. If it's an overwhelming survey, just maybe taking a look at that. Um, that way the voters could decide um, and we could get a general sense of how people feel about this. But those are just my thoughts. I'll pass it along. At this time, I don't have any comments. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Councilwoman Hoffman Gorman. I'd just say thank you to the people that spoke, and um, we appreciate your comments. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Mayor Pro Tem. Oh, I turn. Thank you three for speaking, and uh, I agree with the rest of the council on looking at it on both sides of the street. Okay. Uh, I want to thank you also for, for speaking as well. And, uh, yes, and I would like to have more information about, uh, I mean, I have a lot of information about, you know, the, the dangers of secondhand smoke, and you can't really 
argue against those, but what I would like to see is more information on the balance of property rights and individual uh, liberties um, as in contrast, not necessarily contrast, but in, in addition to um, the health um, uh, elements of uh, secondhand smoke, because you can't dispute that part, but I just want to know how does that affect you know people's property rights, property values, and things of that, of that nature, in addition to the health components. But I want to thank you, all three, for um, coming tonight and uh, voicing your concerns. Thank you. With that, we'll move our agenda, our communications to the consent calendar. There's three items under the consent calendar. What is the pledge of this body and so and such? I have a couple. Uh, one, I have a couple questions on a couple of, not questions, but okay. um, I'll start with um, number, uh, well, quick comment for number two, accounts payable. Um, I noticed there was a budget packet. It's put together every year, but I'm completely fine getting mine digitally, so I don't know if that, <laughs> if we're able to do that, I'm fine with cutting a little bit of cost. And then the minutes, if we could just have, um, there's a section, if I could have it corrected. I attended a um, board of directors meeting for the COG, not the steering committee. So if I could just get that updated. That was it. Okay. Anyone have, have anything else on the consent calendar? I, I just have a question. Yes, if I wasn't here uh, yes, for the can. consent calendar, do I still vote? It's your, it's your, you can. If I you could, can. okay. Yes. Right. Sorry, thank you. Yes, ma'am. So with any of the other questions, I'll make a motion to accept the consent calendar as written. Okay, the motion's been made that we accept the I'll consent second calendar. Um, with the little amendments that uh, was outlined by our source, uh, there's a second by, second by, Bernadette? Bernadette, I'll second the uh, motion. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, I'm gonna ask the city clerk to uh, conduct the vote on the consent calendar. Okay, motion passes unanimously. Thank you, madam. Next item is item four under administration of water contract for 2021 pavement management systems. Let's have the staff report. Good evening, honorable mayor and member of the council. Um, this evening, staff would like to provide you information on the 2021 pavement management system. Um, city has completed the PMS uh, payment management system back in 2016 and it requires an, uh, requires an update. Um, payment management system is a comprehensive report or plan of the citywide pavement condition index also known as PCI. Um, back July 13th, uh, city has uh, issued the RFP for the 2021 PMS to five qualified consultants and we received three engineering, uh, three uh, proposals on October 24th. Um, they were from Bucknam Infrastructure Group, NCE, and IMS. Uh, based on the staff evaluation of the three proposals, uh, Bucknam Infrastructure uh, Group was ranked as the best qualified firm to provide the, uh, the service for the 2021 PMS. Based on the firm's experience, uh, the team's qualification, uh, understanding of the project and the fee schedule. Uh, the fee schedule submitted by Buckner Associate Buckner uh, Infrastructure Group was uh, $63,372. Um, and whereas the, the budget for this project was $90,000. Um, in addition to the uh, payment management system, staff requ uh, requested Buckner uh, Infrastructure Group to provide a uh, service for uh, pricing for digitizing the inventory of street, uh, street stripings, legends, and just curb markings throughout the city. Um, Bucknam provided a fee schedule for that uh, service to be uh, $15,624, uh, totaling the, the whole project to be $78,996, which is still less than the $90,000 budget. So with, uh, with that, let me introduce Peter Bucknam from Bucknam & Associates that could provide you with a little more details on the, the actual preparations and the, uh, the benefits of the PMS. Peter. Thank you, appreciate it, Julian. Uh, Honorable Mayor, Council Members, appreciate the opportunity to be in front of you this evening to discuss briefly uh, in regards to the major bullet points of the pavement management 
program uh, project. So I'll go through that for the next several minutes, and if there's any Q&A or any questions from there, uh, we can move forward. Uh, real quickly, I've been, I'm the owner and operator of Bucknam Infrastructure. I'm a working principal in the firm. I run all our pavement management programs as a project manager. I've been doing such for over 20 years throughout Southern California. We currently work with about 30 cities in this county, half the cities in Orange. Uh, and over my career, I've done about 500 total pavement management programs. So we bring a lot of experience, that uh, SoCal experience, to Lawndale. And we're, again, looking forward to a, a great project. There's some other items there that we, we focus on as a, a service line for our, our, our clients, which is 100% cities. Do, uh, like Julian indicated, we do sidewalk, traffic control element, surveys, and, and such. Uh, what is a pavement management program? Real quickly, the major uh, focus points for us is defining the network level uh, planning tool for the engineering and public works staff to move forward with success, successful PMP over the next five years minimum. Uh, we assess all the historical improvements the city has done, not just in the last year, but we look back over five plus years. Uh, we define this, the pavement network in logical, common sense segments. So when our planning document gets to the engineers for PSNE, which is Plan Specs and Engineering, uh, it makes common, it makes perfectly common sense. It's apples to apples in regards to cost estimating and uh, the ability to get projects out efficiently, uh, the right size projects. Uh, we do visual service and inspe uh, inspection services based on the Army Corps of Engineers methodologies. Uh, as indicated, we define a pavement condition index value for each pavement segment. Historically, Lawndale has had about 300 total pavement segments. Uh, we will update that. As we go through the inspections, we work with the staff to define your uh, and, and identify your annual budgets that are appropriated for the PMP. Uh, and then we define the unit cost as well. So we want, want to make sure that it is apples to apples when it gets to design and construction. Our goal is to do short-term annual goals that are proactive and reasonable with a long-term application process that is successful. Uh, so again, why payment management? We want to build an efficient use of limited funding in, in today's world with inflation and everything else going on. Maintain the valuable infrastructure assets that are under the scope of work. Provide an overall rating that's easy to understand from the city council all the way down to the engineers. Help identify areas of requiring, that are requiring treatments. Uh, and define a planning tool that identifies the needed budgets, the true cost of the maintaining the PMP. And there's graphically below, there's a simple payment distress all the way to the GIS that we're going to be providing for Lawndale. Real quick, uh, the system was updated in 2016. There's about 8 million square feet in the system. Uh, the pre previous PCI defined in 2016 was a 64. Uh, we're looking at, total, again, 300 total sections uh, to manage and I, you know, help you identify priorities. Uh, and again, if we were to replace the entire system based upon today's unit cost, you're looking at about a $45 million asset for Lawndale. Uh, real quickly, uh, we do major uh, uh, major project elements in regards to the scope of work. I won't get too technical on this due to the time. Uh, our goal, my goal as an owner and a project manager to Lawndale is a project implementation and delivery, client satisfaction, meeting the schedule, and meeting the scope. Uh, this involves project kickoffs, uh, quality control assessments through multiple phases of the scope, uh, de definition of the segmentation that's both digital, graphical, and hard copy. Uh, we want to make logical uh, naming conventions and segmentation. We're going to be implementing a pavement management software. Uh, we, we're going to be performing, it's demonstrated in that image, AI technology and defining the true total square footage of the system, both on the AC, asphalt concrete, and the PCC. So the engineers will have very detailed total square footages uh, compared to the 16 study. Uh, again, we look at work histories. We perform walking Army Corps engineer surveys. Uh, that we are pre-qualified for through multiple uh, auth multiple authorities like uh, OCTA and MTC in this state. Uh, we're, again, we're looking at the pavement condition index, which involves three major elements through inspection. The walking inspections, we pull distress type. There's over 39 types of, dis of distress. Distress quantity, square footage counts, and distress severity, low, medium, and high severities. That allows me as a manager to start working with the data to build that solid PMP. 
Uh, when we again we look at the budgets and the unit costs, we'll be working with Julian and others to really understand how the city has been sustaining the asset over the year. I want to get a snapshot, or I call it an audit, of how the system is currently being managed and performed. Uh, and this are one of our major goals is to model the actual budget, tell you the good news or bad news. Either way, we're going to then define another budgetary model that will indicate what it will cost to maintain the system over five years and if there's available funding how to improve the system over the next five years more details in the funding process if there's any q a on that i just mentioned the actual maintaining and increase typical scenarios uh, we're considering all funding sources from the, the state the county the city and the fed so we're looking at all available funding actively you know, in this uh, infrastructure arena that we're on, the federal level looking at you know, pumping money into the system as, as well as to the county of LA. Uh, additionally, we're doing the sidewalk and traffic control elements. We're gonna be performing a, a conditional survey on all the sidewalks. Uh, we work with Public Works to define what is a potential ramping improvement, what's a grind improvement, and what's a replacement. We follow the Army Corps survey for that. That's gonna be about 80 plus miles of survey because there's a sidewalk obviously on both sides of the street. And then we're gonna be looking at traffic control elements to help the city improve the cost estimating by doing street striping, traffic control legends, and curb markings uh, under this project. And finally, additionally, what we're gonna be providing to uh, Julian and others in the city is a online presence through GIS all this infrastructure data that we'll be collecting for you from the pavement, sidewalk, and the traffic control elements will be easily managed through the city's GIS portal, which is called ArcGIS Online. We do this for multiple cities throughout the, the uh, count, or excuse me, the state here. And I, I personally run about six cities' entire GIS systems, so we bring that skill set to you as well. Uh, we're providing training on what we're doing as well, and I, I would welcome the opportunity to come back in front of you in the next several months to report our findings and tell you what's going on. So with that, here's again some of the major goals for this. Uh, the bottom one there, produce common sense pavement management has always been our success mantra. Uh, again, we implement very proactive PMPs that are achievable. So with that, I'll leave it to the Q&A if any. Yeah, thank you. So, Okay, thank you for that um, presentation. Yep. Um, uh, yeah, we're excited. Well, I'm excited about this. Uh, it's not one of our, I guess, more sexier projects, <laughs> but it's very important that we manage you know, um, our streets and our pavements. There, it was just funny because I was talking to a council member in a, some some other city, and we were kind of talking about their lack of street maintenance. You know, has made. Um, national, not national, but statewide news. And uh, we certainly don't want that in our line there. So <laughs> we appreciate um, you know, this proposal for a payment of management of system, and we appreciate um, you coming to join us uh, to make sure that we manage our, our, our program here. Is there anything else you want to add, uh, Mr. Public Works? Uh? No, uh, again, this is one of the um, tools that we talked about in the, about planning the Public Works Department and planning to for the future for the city, not only the short term, but the long term. Uh, again, this is the first uh, planning uh, tools that we'll be using, and we'll, we'll have several more planning tools that will be coming in your presence. Nice, and it's um, instead of $90,000, $78,000, pretty exciting. <laughs> yeah, it's business as well to get a quality of projects, so I appreciate that. Let me ask the council for anything they'd like to discuss on this item. I just have one request that for other uh, staff reports, if we could see, I'm used to seeing the, the breakdown, what the different bids were and the amounts. Okay. So if we could continue to keep those in the future staff report. We'll do. Okay. So with that, yes, sir. I have a question. On here it says uh, walking areas. That includes sidewalks, right? Correct. Uh -huh. Curb cuts for handicap ramps and everything? Correct. Okay. Because it seems like we just authorized a company to do that for us. That was for the uh, risk assessment. Yeah. So, yeah, that was for the risk assessment. But it was for hand, handicap ramps, yeah. damaged sidewalks. So are we going to double indemnity here? 
uh, the ADA transition plan will be more of an ADA uh, access such as ramp, whereas uh, Buckland Infrastructure will be accessing the, the whole uh, sidewalk um, from, uh, from, uh, from, uh, from the street level. They'll be looking at the comprehensive sidewalk, not just the, just the ramp. I'm not talking about the ramp. I think this, the study did sidewalks coming up in, up in the air. That's Correct. It. So I just want to know if I'm doing one company, where we're doing two. I mean, I'm a penny venture when it comes to city money. Again, the AGA transcripts plan will look at just mostly on the ramps portion of it. This will look into the, the integrity, the structure integrity of the sidewalk. Okay. Okay. All right, with that, unless there's any additional questions of the presentation, I'll entertain a motion at this time to receive the, um, the water contract. I'll, uh, I'll motion that we uh, award the contract of the 2021 payment management system to uh, Beckham uh, Infrastructure <coughs> and the not to exceed more than 78,996. Okay, the motion has been made by a Is there a second on the motion? I'll second it. Suarez has seconded. Is there any discussion on the motion? Senator, uh, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, item five. City Council Subcommittees and Standing Committees Edition. Item five. <coughs> One is to reiterate the, the standing committees that we currently have. But then there's an action item to um, formally appoint two additional subcommittees. They're pretty self-explanatory on the, um, the committees that we currently have, so unless anyone have any want to discuss those, those are, those are pretty explanatory. The um, business revitalization, school district, billboard, school district slash park maintenance, and the subcommittee for the, the budget and the metro sea line. But the two new uh, committees that pleasure of this body we're looking for is um, the Caltrans Maintenance Standing Committee. Um, right now, this is a um, committee, uh, Rhonda Hoffman Gorman and myself have been meeting with um, Caltrans on, on this issue for uh, recently, last couple of maybe months or whatever, but we want to make it official uh, standing committee. And it is, I would like to see um, Rhonda Hoffman Gorman to continue the great work on that committee. Um, and I'll continue to, to join you if you, if, if, if you like it. Yeah. And, um, and on the team committee, so the team center committee, let me just give a little background. So this is, will be a totally new uh, uh, subcommittee. Um, a few years ago, this, this body had entertained, um, I initiated the, uh, that we developed a team center. And at the time, we didn't get all the funds that we were looking for. To receive, and so we kind of put the uh, project on the shelf. And uh, through the work of a single woman out of Burke, um, we will be getting a substantial amount of funding for our team center. And so um, I'm glad to see that. And so with that, uh, we're suggesting to put together a, a team center subcommittee. And I was wondering if there's any members of this body. Oh, I see one. <laughs> one that would like to um, serve um, with me on the, the subcommittee. I would like to serve on the subcommittee and see if this is one other person. I wanted to as well, but um, I haven't served on that many committees and people have been grabbing them up, so I'd like to make a request. However, you know, I'm just putting it out there too. Okay, so, so Bernie would like to serve on the subcommittee for the teen center. And let, let, let's see, let me just look at she got a balance here. Well, let's 
let's do this. Uh, I wonder whether we had more than one uh, additional council member that was interested. Well, let's make let's make the Caltrans one official first, um, unless there's someone else that wanted to do Caltrans as, as well. Um, let's have I don't know if we need a motion. You did think in the consensus, right? Just a consensus. We, 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 we can do yeah. Let's let's do the Caltrans by consensus. Do we have a consensus for the Caltrans? I'm good with that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we will have uh, myself and Rod Hoffman Gordon for the Caltrans uh, committee. Um, let me, let's hear about this, the, the, the teen center um, subcommittee. On this one, it, it used the word subcommittee instead of standing committee. What, what's the difference? Um, uh, Mr. Mayor, um, basically the difference between a, a subcommittee and a standing committee is if, um, for, for a standing committee, that, that would be a committee that doesn't have an end date in terms of the, the topic that's being discussed. Uh, but with a subcommittee, Typically, it's uh, an issue um, that you know will end at some point. So, um, uh, for for something like that, uh, uh, a subcommittee would be appropriate because, in that case, um, that subcommittee would only meet for a you know a defined amount of time. So, for example, it could be you know uh, a six month period. It could be a twelve month period. Whereas with a standing committee. There is no end date to to when that committee will stop meeting. Okay. Um, does anyone want to speak? I'll speak. So I just kind of thought it'd be nice to kind of spread around so there's representation. Each council member gets the opportunity. I'm fine with Shirley sitting on this one, but you know I probably will the next one. I can call dibs on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, let me just say one thing. Next year, you can all have these committees. Because it'll be my last year, and I will not be on committees anymore. So you can fight over the, all of them. Not fight, yeah, yeah, debate. Let's saying. say debate. Yeah, I'm just trying to see you guys. So I'm OK, but really, if you want you and, and Bernadette. Bernadette will be fine. Yes. Yeah, that's fine. Because I have two. I'm already on two. So yeah. I mean, if you're really sad on it, it's fine, like, you know, but I just would kind of like yeah. to do one more because um, everybody's been. Because you also have the high school, don't you? I don't, actually. No? Hmm. No, she had Caltrans with me to begin with. Oh, okay. And that was Metro. Was it Metro? Yeah. Well, I don't necessarily have that. Because uh, I'm following that issue uh, throughout the, the district, they're doing some work in some other cities so too, um, in, in the areas. We're getting somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. And Mr. Mayor, if I if I might just uh, add a little something to the discussion. So when it comes to subcommittees, um, it, it's just a, an opportunity for two members of the city council to work with staff and you know a particular agency to try to um, you know have discussions on whatever the issue may be with Caltrans it's uh, typically maintenance issues um, but uh, you know the the substance of those subcommittee meetings are reported to the full council so the full council will always have an opportunity to ask questions provide some amount of input um, that the subcommittee could then take back uh, so there is always an opportunity for all council members to, you know, provide some level of input. Well, let me do this. Mr. Let's Mayor, have Bernadette. go ahead and, and give it have, to Bernadette. No, let's have Bernadette and let's have Shirley uh, Quarters on the uh, team subcommittee. No, it's okay, Robert. I'd rather, I know it was your pet project. No, no, go <laughs> ahead, Robert. So it's something that's going to report back to the council. Back. So let's do this. Let's that's the point. Yeah, I just pleasure this by um, Bernadette Suarez and show the Quakers the team center. So yeah. yeah. You sure? I mean I, I could do something else later. But 
Go ahead. Why don't you and Bernadette take this one? Okay, so let's do Robert. Robert pull in my house. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just go ahead and do it. And then okay. we'll, okay. you're still okay. coming okay. to us anyways. Okay, so can I get a consensus for um, Robert pulling my house and um, like, I'm a second or third person? And um, um, Bernadette, it's where it's I'm going with it. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. okay. So that that'd be the, the, the order. So for Caltrans, RP, now um, Robert Food Miles and Rhonda Hopkins Gorman, I have my initials here, Catherine Initials, I have initials. And uh I'm burning the SRS and pulling miles for the T So we'll just take that um and that makes consent. Okay. Let me ask you one other question. That, that's not going to change the makeup, but just to make sure I'm clear on the, the notation here where it talks about that the meeting is a standing committee subject to the Brown Act, even if it comprises less of a quorum. Does that mean that, because uh, I had a question with like, like for instance, with the billboard subcommittee, there's some negotiations involved in that. If it's a subcommittee, does that mean that negotiation is subject to the um, public disclosure? My concern, if that's the case, is that if we're negotiating and we know that we have whatever our um, our uh, reservation on price, and then they know our reservation price, it, it, would it be kind of counterintuitive if, by public records, they can find out what we're working with in terms of the negotiation? Yes, sir. You're absolutely right. Um, <clears throat> the way the city of Lawndale, the city of Lawndale uses two terms. One is a standing committee. That term is used by other cities as well. Standing committees are subject to the Brown Act. Uh, as the city manager said, they're of unlimited duration and they're to meet fairly regularly. Uh, subcommittees, which in some cities are called ad hoc committees, are a single purpose and they meet irregularly. And so those subcommittees are not subject to the Brown Act or to reporting, while your standing committees are subject. Okay. Does that make sense, sir? Yes, sir. This would be a subcommittee, not a standing committee. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for the clarification. Okay, with that, I think let's see where is the Go back to the agenda. Okay, we're now ready for city manager's report. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Uh, just one item. I just wanted to um, remind um, our residents that uh, this week the city is conducting its um, bulky item trash pickup um, and that will be happening uh, with regular trash service that happens um, whatever day of the week that that uh, your trash is picked up and uh, this is a chance for uh, our residents to put out bulky items such as sofas chairs tables mattresses uh, landscape debris for example uh, would be something good to put out uh, if they have that and uh, again this will be during regular collection days and um, if uh, residents have other items um, that are like paint, uh, electronic waste, um, motor oil, or house hazardous household materials, um, those are not included with this collection process. And for that, um, if residents need that picked up, all they need to do is contact Republic Service for a separate um, time to come pick up those items from their home. Um, and just as a reminder, a few items, types of items that are not permitted for uh, uh, bulky item pickup at all, um, you know, as well as for um, um, hazardous household waste um, items. So these, these items are not permitted at all, are things like ammunition, gasoline, tires, and auto parts. So with that, I just wanted to put that out as a reminder. And if uh, residents have any questions, they can contact Republic Services or the Public Works Department. Thank you. Thank you for that report. Okay, Mayor, Councilman Torres. Council okay. Um, so I'll try and make it brief. Uh, I attended the eighth annual Londell's Blues Festival. Thank a big shout out to staff. Thank you so much. I had the pleasure of introducing Guitar Shorty, who had quite an illustrious career. So it was, it was, that spanned, I think it was 50 years or so. So that was fun to introduce uh, that musician. And then I did attend this past weekend Contract City's annual fall seminar. 
Um, and it, it's one of those things where it, you, you get to connect and kind of see what other cities are doing. Um, I will report that I did uh, attend ethics training, which for, <laughs> for some people brought up more questions and answers. So <laughs> that was very interesting, a lot of good questions there. Um, and then I did have one question that I'm hoping to put on a future agenda. I, I've kind of been curious about our, our uh, RFP process, and there's been a few that, um, you know, I would kind of have liked to have seen uh, council member input, so I kind of wanted to revisit, um, you know, I think it's the approval limit for, for city manager. Just curious, because there was a few that I think kind of would be nice to discuss, so I wanted to know what other cities, what their approval ratings look like and such, um, and with that, I'll pass it along. Council um, I also attended the Blue Festival. Thank you, Mike and uh, Julian, for your staff. They did a great job. Um, it was very nice. A lot of people enjoyed it. Um, I did get to speak to uh, several people from uh, Redondo, Hawthorne. We, we did get a lot of people from, not from Lawndale, from outside Lawndale, and they enjoyed the bands that were here. Thank you. Um, I will be traveling tomorrow to Sacramento to the League of California Cities annual, um, I forgot what it is, a conference. Um, so I will report on that uh, when I come back uh, on our next meeting. Thank you. Councilwoman Hoffman I also attended the Blues Festival. And I also want to add on top of what has already been said, absolutely wonderful to see the car show. I thoroughly enjoyed seeing what we had going on on cars. It was smaller this year, but I think it was just appropriate for coming out of the pandemic. And Mike, I know as short staffed as you are in, in your department, kudos to you for doing such a tremendous job in getting that done. I also attended the California Contract Cities fall um, conference in Indian Wells this last weekend and as Bernadette said it is just great to go and learn from other cities and to find out what the issues are there and um, and bring up some some of our own ideas I hope here in the fall we can start talking and revisiting our firework suppression um, plan and start preparing real early for next July and that's on on my idealist and things to do this fall and also to get involved with mr. Michael Reyes in starting a neighborhood watch program hopefully this fall I can work with him on that thank you thank you mr. Pat Curry that's two, two things uh, the city manager and I attended via zoom our library trust and oversight committee meeting went very well and also I attended the blues festival but uh, some of the residents came up and asked uh, uh, me about are we going to have any country western are we all going to have any Latin, Latino music are we going to have any 80s music and of course mine's Motown but so I, I know we had slated before the pandemic two events I'm just wondering what can we do it next year as a music festival that's my question. Thank you. All right, so I attended the regular meeting of the sanitation district. Um, I also attended um, the Contract Cities on Fall Educational Summit, where among other um, workshops I attended was the uh, ethics training as well as sexual harassment prevention um, training, which both are required. There's a lot of good um, seminars. Um, even though it was small, um, smaller this year, um, it was. I did have a, a good time. I, I, I learned um, a lot. Um, the seminars was, were great. Uh, in particular, Doctor um, Father, um, um, what's his name? From, Gregory uh, Boyle. Homeboys. Gregory Boyle is from uh, Homeboys Industry. He had a very uh, inspirational uh, uh, presentation on. Um, how they um, basically um, work with these um, gang members and and just um, um, 
young people who are, you know, find themselves, you know, in the, um, a lot of times on the wrong side of, of, of the law, if you will, and how they're able to uh, motivate them and turn their lives around through their various initiatives and, and programs. Um, I, I heard a lot about Homeboys Industries over the years, but I had no idea that it was um, big of an operation. Um, they, they have um, from six screens, you know, of businesses to, there was at least about, about maybe six different businesses, mm -hmm. six, seven different businesses um, um, that they have that they can, um, these young people um, employed and trained in to, to get them out of games. They also have a program where you can get tattoo um, removals. You know, and um, those are some um, wonderful um, uh, programs that um, I was really um, inspired in, um, by my uh, father's own presentation. So I just wanted to, matter of fact, that was the, the, the one presentation that I did um, uh, post about, because I don't do a lot of posting, but uh, the one presentation that I did do a, a post of. Uh, homeboys industry that was uh, outstanding. Um, the, seemed like I wanted to mention something else. Oh, and I did also attend the, the Lawndale's uh, Blues Festivals. Uh, big thanks to the, um, Mike Estes and his staff and the volunteers. It was, it, yeah, it was a, it was a party. It was a party. Yeah, it was, it, it was, <laughs> it was good. We, we had a good, good time there, and and the weather was was, was nice. Was nice. Um, prior to that, it was really hot, but it, that day it was it was nice weather. So I want to thank everyone for coming out and the staff for uh, putting that together. And, um, hopefully next year we'll be back on uh, full strength. You know, and uh, yes, uh, Rhonda, the car shows, uh, the cars uh, displays were uh, outstanding. It was always a, a good attraction, and I had a chance opportunity to speak to some of the um, the, the car clubs uh, on, on the, an event that they want to put on and. Uh, at some point, talk to the city manager and Mike Estes uh, about it to see how we go about about that. With that, that's all I have. Um, no closed session today, tonight, but the next regularly scheduled meeting of the Lawndale City Council will be held at 6.30 p.m. on Monday, October 4th. And these here chambers, it is now 7.25, and this meeting is adjourned. Five minutes ahead of schedule.